Fire is my only love. Shut up! Cartoons! Back in the day in 1994, Capcom sued Data East. Why was that? Because Capcom, when they released the game Street Fighter II Champion Edition, Data East released a game called Fighter's History. And what did Capcom sue them on? Capcom said that Data East copied the characters of Street Fighter in the game Fighter's History. Here's the character select of Street Fighter II Champion Edition. You got your Ryu, E Honda, Blanca, Guile, Balrog, Vega, Ken, Chun-Li, Zangief, Dalsam, Sagat, and M. Bison. But then, in Fighter's History, you have these set of characters. I don't know their names actually off by heart, but Capcom said that Fighter's History copied Street Fighter, and they sued them in 1994. Now, this video that just uploaded on this channel, Restart Fanzine, uploaded five days ago, Fighter's History versus Street Fighter 2 character comparison lawsuit video. There was a video that Data East representative made and then sent to different shops to explain to them that no, as Data East, we did not copy Street Fighter. And in this video, which is a hidden gem, they explain why Data East didn't copy Capcom. This is, quality is in VHS tapes, so the quality is going to be bad, but thankfully this YouTube channel uploaded it. Let's react to this. Hello, I'm Esco Adelman, Manager of Corporate Liaison at Data East USA Inc. in San Jose, California. This presentation provides a visual comparison of the characters and fighting moves from the two one-on-one -on -one fight games at issue in this dispute, Street Fighter II and Fighter's History. Street Fighter II is produced by Capcom Company Limited in Japan and distributed by the plaintiff Capcom USA Inc. Fighter's History is produced by Defendant Data East Corp in Japan and distributed by Defendant Data East USA. So this is a woman who's representing Data East. So this video will be biased and leading toward the fact that Data East did not copy Street Fighter and Capcom. The nature of this dispute is described more fully in the printed materials filed by Capcom and Data East. Put simply, Capcom claims that Data East copied the fighter characters and their moves from Street Fighter II and put them into the Data East game fighter's history. Capcom has filed the declaration of a support representative, David Winstead, making these allegations. This video is organized into two parts. Part one, made up of seven short segments, reviews Capcom's allegation that Data East copied seven characters from Street Fighter II. We will compare them with the characters from Fighter's History that Capcom claims are copied. And this video will be only the part one where they have seven segments and they show seven characters and they compare the seven characters that Capcom is claiming that Fighter's History stole from them. Part two, made up of 18 short segments, compares several fighting techniques generally known as special moves that Capcom claims were copied in Fighter's History. Part two is not in this video, only part one. So this uploader only updated part one of this. In this first segment, we will review Capcom's claim that Data East character Matlock Jade is a copy of Capcom's character Guile. A visual comparison of these characters show that they are not similar. This is Guile as he appears in the Street Fighter II Strategy Guide. The images from the Strategy Guide are the only images Capcom submitted with its papers. That's interesting that Capcom, when they filed the lawsuit, they only picked images from this Strategy Guide right here. Look, this is the Strategy Guide's back in the day. Look at how much it was worth, $9.95. Strategy Guide's today, oh my God, they're way more expensive. The official Street Fighter II strategy guide by Capcom. Uh, what, what I found funny about this uh, title art, uh, the title art, the uh, cover art, is that notice how Chun Li, E Honda, Guile, and M Bison. Why are they all squinting? Why are their faces like that? They have the friggin' grin and they're squinting. But then one of the theories is because Blanca is using his electricity ball. And the electricity light is so bright that they all have to squint. That's one of the theories. But I just found that art the artwork not so good for the title but this is what capcom used for the pictures that they used so in this video you have guile here so let's do a comp let's 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 do this here if you think that guile looks familiar you could be right 
So right there, the representative data East is saying, wait a minute, if you really think that fighters history is copying Capcom, well, doesn't Guy look familiar to other people like in, in celebrities like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something? So that's a little rib that Data East took at Capcom right there. This is the image of Guile from Street Fighter II Champion Edition in his ready stance. I will refer to the screen images from the two games as bitmap images. Guile is obviously associated with the United States military. He wears camouflage military pants, army boots, a green military undershirt, dog tags, and a tattoo of an American flag. Consistent with his military image, Guile has a flat top haircut. In many one-on-one -on -one fighting games, each character has its own graphical background known as its home stage. Giles is a military base. There are other military personnel, a military aircraft, and United States Air Force insignia on the pavement. Matlock Jade from Data East Fighters History is quite different from Guile in both conception and appearance. This is a pencil sketch of Matlock used by the graphic artist as a model for the bitmap images in so the game. So let's look at that clearly. So in the Street Fighter Capcom strategy guide, Guile looks like this. What an awesome picture of Guile, by the way. That's so awesome. Like if you want to see what Guile looks like at its like official look, it's supposed to look like this. American muscle. He's kind of older. He looks kind of, this is what Guile is supposed to look like. So Street Fighter Capcom is claiming that Guile looks like Matlock from Fighter's History. I'm looking at both of these right now and I do not see a similarity. One of the similarities I do see is that this guy Guile has the army, you know, army pants. And then he has the green pants, but we have something over the knees. The boots look kind of similar. You got kind of the same kind of boots going on there. But as for the top, I do not see a similarity in the hair. Hair is different. This guy's got a brush head while he's got a flat top haircut. He's wearing a undershirt while he's wearing some weird straps. Like, I don't know, he's from friggin' BDSM or something like that. And at the same time, he's wearing something over his ears. What are those headphones or something? So I do not see the similarity. Let's see what else this person says. And here's the bitmap image of Matt Locke from Fighter's History in his ready stance. Matt Locke is an athletic punk rocker from England. He sports a blonde mohawk. Matt Locke is an athletic punk rocker from England, while Guile is an army guy from friggin' America. So I don't know why the hell Capcom thought to try to sue Data East over this character. That doesn't make sense to me. Haircut, sunglasses, and headphones, a leather studded harness, baggy pants, and boots. Matt Locke's hair design Hold on. Was Let's move it back a little bit. Let's move, see, look how quickly the representative of Data East skipped over this. Well, actually, that's actually in the second segment, but let's look at it right now. Look at the move that Matt Locke does. Baggy pants and boots. Sonic boom, but this time with one arm. Matt Locke does a sonic boom with one arm, while Guile does a sonic boom with two arms. So there's a difference that Data East did on purpose. Matt Locke's hair design was based on this photograph of a spiked mohawk haircut. Each character in Fighter's history has a particular weak spot and will be stunned if the opponent hits this weak spot when it is flashing. This concept does not exist in Street Fighter 2. That II. is true. While Street Fighter 2 has a stun mechanic, Fighter's history has something that's flashing on the screen from the body part, and if you hit that body part, then they get stunned. So that is also different. Matt Locke's weak spots are his sunglasses and headphones. Consistent with Matt Locke's athletic and musical character, his fighting movements, especially the kicks, resemble breakdancing. Matt Locke's home stage is a street in England featuring other punk rockers and a distinctly British Bobby. Dance music plays in the background. The personality differences between Guile and Matlock are reinforced by their speech and behavior after winning a round. Ow, come on! This is Guile after a first round victory. Note that he silently combs his hair and folds his hands on his hips. Matlock is completely different. 
So as for the first segment, I agree. I 100% agree with this Data East representative that Guile was not copied and they made some character named Matlock. Matlock's from England. He's a punk rocker, right? He's got a brush head, leather harness. Guile's from America. He's, he's in the Army, Air Force. He's got the undershirt, green army pants on. And even in the wind pose, you can see that the punk rocker Matlock says, hey, come on. And while Guile just sits there silently brushing his head. I agree with Data East. The second segment compares Data East's character Samche Tomyamkum and Capcom's character Sagat. Capcom asserts that Samche is a copy of Sagat. Both characters are Thai kickboxers, but otherwise they are very different. This is Sagat from Capcom's Street Fighter II strategy guide. He has a distinctive patch over one eye and a prominent scar across his chest. Now let's just look at that artwork. It's such a beautiful piece of artwork. That's what Sagat is supposed to look like. That's what he's supposed to be. The guy's like seven feet tall. If there's one criticism I would make of this artwork, he's a bit too buff in my opinion. If you're from Thailand and you're like seven feet tall and your diet is like rice and fish and like, you're not gonna be this buff in my opinion. You're gonna be a little bit more skinnier. So that would be the only criticism. But other than that, this artwork is spectacular. This is the bitmap image of Sagat in front of his home stage. Sagat is a bald giant who dwarfs other Street Fighter II characters. <laughs> Sagat is a bald giant? I've never heard of that way of representing Sagat. <laughs> this is a pencil sketch of Data East Samche, used as a model for the bitmap images in the game. Okay, so now Capcom they submitted this artwork in their lawsuit against Data East. They're like, this is what Sagat is. And here's the artwork of Samche. He looks like that. Now, let's look at some similarities. Let's look at some differences. They're both Muay Thai characters. We can see that. Both Muay Thai fighting style. Uh, you got the default color of Sagat is using the blue shorts with the red stripe while Samchai uses the green shorts with the red stripe. So a little bit of similarity there, but that's those are traditional Muay Thai shorts that they use when they fight in Muay Thai. You have the, you have the wrist wraps, same over here. Uh, Sagat has one eye missing with an eye patch, Samchai does not. Samchai has the, head, the traditional headband that they use in Muay Thai and the armbands but Sagat does not have those. So those are the differences and similarities. This is the bitmap image of Samche in his ready stance. Samche is a muscular but trim Thai kickboxer. His fighting movements and costume are based on the art of Muay Thai. That was literally the same tiger knee, but you cannot say that you're copying because of the moves because in Muay Thai, there are knees. You throw jumping knees all the time. Sanchez's appearance, costume, and movements were made as authentic as possible given the limitations of computer graphics, including his wrap wrists, bicep armbands, and traditional headband. Sanchez's weak spots are his armbands. Sanchez's fighting moves and stances were all inspired by photographs of actual kickboxers, as illustrated in this Thai kickboxing book. Sagat wears neither the traditional headband nor armband. That is true. I just said that, right? Sagat does not have the armband and the headband, the traditional ones like they do in Muay Thai, like Samche has. So it, for Capcom to say that fighters' history is like this character is a copy of Sagat, it's stupid. Muay Thai is known around the world. If you're going to make a Muay Thai character, they're going to look like this pretty damn close. Samche shouts out the name of his special attacks in Thai, unlike Sagat. That's so cool. He actually says it in Thai and he shouts. That's so cool. I wish they did that for Sagat too. Instead of saying tiger in tiger uppercut, I wish that he said it in, in, uh, in Thai. That would have sounded so cool. Although Mr. Winstead states that Samche is bald like Sagat, he is obviously not. Mr. Winstead also states that Sagat wears earrings. 
According to the picture in Capcom's strategy guide, he does not. What? Why? What? Wait, wait, wait. The representative of Capcom said, number one, that Samche is bald like Sagat, which he's not clearly. You can see right here, he's not bald. And then he also said, like in, right here in Samche's picture, you can see in his ear, he's wearing earrings. But he said that Sagat wears earrings. No, he never does. I have never seen once Sagat wearing earrings in anything, in a game, in an animated movie, in an animated cartoon. I have not once seen Sagat with earrings. So this guy from Capcom who's representing the Capcom in the lawsuit, you're an idiot. Sagat's home stage is completely different from Samche's. Absolutely. So in that case, in this case right here, I agree with Data East again. In this third segment, we review Capcom's assertion that Data East's character Makoto Mizoguchi is a copy of Capcom's character Ryu. Other than being male Japanese fighters using karate techniques, the two characters are not similar. This is the picture of Capcom's Ryu from the Street Fighter II strategy guide. Ryu wears a traditional Shotokan karate outfit, complete with a black belt and extended wrist Now protectors. let's take a look at this artwork. If you guys want to see how Ryu is supposed to look in its most authentic form, it's this, all right? Look at it in all its glory. If you look at Ryu's height in the stats that he had, I think he's 5'5", 5'4", 5'5". He's a... Sh this, he's supposed to be short, but he's supposed to be a karate master. This is what Ryu's supposed to look like, people, not what you see now with all that woke garbage in the friggin' new Street Fighters. He's supposed to look like this. Traditional black belt. He's got the hand pads. He's got the traditional karate, karate gi, or G, And he's got the headband for coolness factor. This is the bitmap image of Ryu on his home stage which is a dojo rooftop. This is a pencil sketch of Mizoguchi. This is the bitmap image of Mizoguchi in his ready Now let's stance. look at Mizoguchi close. Here's a good picture of him. Right here. Now, okay, okay. Now we're getting a little bit closer to you're copying the character, right? Aren't we? But there are some differences, right? You got Ryu with the gi on. You got Mizoguchi without the gi on, just some high pants and he's got some you know some you know bands around his stomach he might have got hurt or he's in pain but the headband is there the headband is there you got Ryu with the red headband and you got Mizuguchi with the white headband funny enough in Street Fighter Alpha Ryu's character is with a white headband so maybe that was a little rib that Capcom took at uh, Fighters History Data he said hey if you're gonna copy us with a headband in Alpha which was released after this we're going to use the white headband as well. But you know what the thing that strikes me the most about this character, this, this artwork, is the pose. This finishing pose that Mizuguchi has is the same finishing pose that Ryu has also in Street Fighter 2. You cross the arms and you look away in silence. That pose is pretty much the same. Mizuguchi departs from the traditional karate dress with baggy black pants, and shortened wrist protectors. Mizoguchi's weak spot is his headband. Mizoguchi is a master of Kenka Karate, or no hold barred karate. It begins with standard karate and adds illegal fighting moves such as attacks below the belt, headbutting, and grabbing an opponent's collar to throw him to the ground. Interesting, and that's quite insightful as well. So if Mizuguchi is in with that illegal karate where you're actually doing illegal blows, Unfortunately, Ryu is with Shotokan Karate, which is actually traditional. So that's a good point that, that this, this person made right here. Mizoguchi's Japanese identification is further emphasized by his home stage, the suspension bridge between two steep mountains in the Kansai region of Japan. It looks very different from Ryu's home stage. In that segment, I also agree with Data East there, but at the same time, you missed some of the similarities that I pointed out before. The reason I'm saying that is because when she's talking about Guile, she's saying that Guile's wind pose, he stands there, brushes his hair in silence, while Matlock is like, yeah, cool, and then he does something like that. 
why not do the same for Ryu and Mizuguchi? Because Ryu's finishing pose, he crosses his arm in silence, and I bet you that his pose is going to be the same, or the artwork is at least. This fourth segment reviews Capcom's assertion that Data East character Jean-Pierre is similar to Capcom's character Vega. Other than being fair-skinned European fighters, these characters are not similar. This is the picture of Vega from the Street Fighter II strategy guide. This is the bitmap image of Vega in his ready stance. Vega fights bare-chested and wears a long, fierce-looking claw on his attacking hand. He covers his face with a protective white hockey mask. In addition hockey to the- Hockey mask? No, hold on. It's not a hockey mask. <laughs> Highly distinctive features. Vega wears high-waisted pants that end just below the knee and brown loafers. His brown hair is worn in a long, braided ponytail. This is the pencil sketch of Jean-Pierre. Now let's look at the artwork of these two, shall we? Let's just appreciate this artwork right here of Vega. That is so awesome. In my opinion, that's not a hockey mask. That's like, I don't know, I can't remember what that is, but that's not a hockey mask, number one. And if I had one criticism of this artwork of Vega, which is known as Balrog in the Japanese version, he, he, he should be skinnier. Vega should not be this buff, all right? He's supposed to be a skinny, ripped, athletic, agility matador. What Vega is is a ninja slash matador. That's his whole fighting style. And he should be much skinnier than this, in my opinion. Who did Capcom say that is a copy of Vega? John Pierre from Fighters History. John friggin' Pierre. This is John Pierre from Fighters History. And then you can notice that he has a, 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 a thigh band of the France flag. But then we all know that Vega's from Spain. So you got that as a difference. Vega's wearing a quote unquote hockey mask. John Pierre is not. Vega has long blonde hair and a ponytail. John Pierre has blonde hair, but not in a ponytail. John Pierre's wearing a friggin' undershirt. Vega is not. The pants could be a little bit of a similarity, right? They could be a little bit. But yeah, brown loafers for Vega, not brown loafers for John Pierre. What's interesting here again, I want to show, John Pierre has a rose. Where have you seen a rose with Vega? In the Alpha series, where he throws a rose in his wind pose. So that's quite interesting. And I think in the later Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4 also, he, th he has something with roses as well. So with that a rib, was that a rib that Capcom took against Data East? Like, hey, Data East, if you're going to try to steal our ideas, we're going to take your Rose idea for Vega as well. Maybe, maybe not. And this is the bitmap image of John in his ready stance. Jean-Pierre is a strong, muscular, yet agile French gymnast. He has short blonde hair in a modern haircut, traditional gymnast outfit, and suspenders. His costume includes boots, and protective knee pads to create a tougher appearance. John's weak spot is his leg band, which is in the colors of the French flag. John's and Vega's home stages are completely different. John fights in a ballroom at the Grand Palace of Versailles. The French aristocracy in full ballroom clothing cheers him on. Vega fights in a Spanish fight pit in a darkened nightclub. The onlookers are protected by a tall chain link fence. So now, if I were to play devil's advocate, the stage, it's kind of like, it's kind of similar in the sense that like, you know, you have your costume woman here, but then also in the Vegas, you have the costume woman here. So I can see where the stage could kind of be copied, but at the same time, Data East cover themselves. Why? Because he's French. This guy's a French gymnast. He's not a Spanish matador slash ninja. So, good job, Data East, covering yourself there. The onlookers are character that reviews Capcom's assertion that Data East's Ray McDougal is similar to Street Fighter II's character Ken. Other than being blonde American men, these characters are not similar. This is Ken from Capcom's Street Fighter II strategy guide. And this is the bitmap image of Ken in his ready stance. Ken has brown eyes and long but neatly layered blonde hair. Ken wears a red karate costume, black belt, and no shoes. This is a bitmap image of Ray generated by Fighters History. 
Ray is an American detective trained in a variety of martial arts. Now let's look at the artwork of those two. So Strategy Guide Capcom, they used this picture. This is Ken. This is what Ken is supposed to be. Not the woke garbage you see. He looks like a friggin' hobo in Street Fighter VI. He's supposed to look like this, by the way. Blonde hair, red karate gi. You got the friggin' hand pads or the gloves. No feet. How does Ray look from Fighter's History? He looks like this. Ray has also blonde hair, but it's not going down. And Ray has pants. Looks like he's wearing running shoes, some friggin' New Balance shoes, and he's got the undershirt on. This, in my opinion, does not even look close to friggin' Ken. Mitsugushi looks way closer to Ryu. This is, this is more similar, right? But in terms of these two right here, nah. They're not similar at all. So I don't know what Capcom was thinking there. He has blue eyes and short, messy blonde hair. He wears a tight muscle shirt with a prominent lightning bolt on the front. To portray his American identity, Ray wears blue jeans and athletic shoes and speaks English while fighting. Ray's weak spot is the lightning bolt on his shirt. Interesting, one of the points that she points out there to defend Data East is that Ray uses English words while fighting because we all know that Ken does not. He says Shoryuken and Hadouken. So that's quite interesting they pointed that out. Ken and Ray have different hairstyles, different colored eyes, and different costumes. Players attracted to Ken's purest karate personality are unlikely to be attracted to Ray, who is almost mocking the purists. Agreed. I agree with that. That's actually a good point. Yeah. I, when I look at Ray, I'm like, who the hell is this guy? But when I look at Ken, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Ray's home stage is the U.S. Capitol building. The accompanying music is rock and roll. Ken's home stage is quite different. But wait, 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 wait. She just said that Ray's music is rock and roll. Kansas music is rock and roll too. Notice how she skipped that part. Why? Because she's defending Data East. She doesn't want to incriminate Data East at all. But yeah. Different. This sixth segment reviews Capcom's allegation that Diddy East character Mastorius is similar to Capcom's character Zangief. Zangief. It's Zangief, not Jeef. Being heavyset wrestlers, the two characters are not similar. This is a picture of Zangief from Capcom's Street Fighter II Strategy Guide. And this is a bitmap image of Zangief in his ready stance. Consistent with Zanjeev's origin in the old Soviet Union, he wears his hair in a short, narrow strip down the middle of his shaved head and has a close-cropped beard. Zanjeev wears only red and gold boots, briefs, and wristbands. There appears to be some barely noticeable hair on Zanjeev's legs above the boot laces. It is impossible to tell whether this hair is fur protruding from the top of the boot or Zangief's own leg hair. It is Zangief's own leg hair. It's not fur protruding on top of the boot. This is the bitmap image of Mastorius from Data East's Game Fighter's history. Let's look at the artwork of these two, shall we? This is Zangief in all his glory. That's how he's supposed to look. Big, buff, strong. Could probably grab you and just bear hug you to friggin' non-existence. This is Zangief in its full form right here. Now let's look at Mastorius from Fighter's History. That is Mastorius. Now let's look at these two right here. We have an, over, an undershirt, half undershirt, which Zangief does not. We have long hair from Mastorius, which Zangief does not. Zangief has the beard there, nicely groomed. Mastorius is more thick and fuller. Mastorius carries, carries around a, a chain and he's got a skirt over his underwear while Zangief just wears the underwear straight up. And then as that woman just said, the fur coming out of Zangief's boot is actually his own hair, but he, Mastorius, has fur boots. So there's quite a difference between these two characters. Mastorius has a more liberated appearance with long shaggy hair and a very full beard. 
Mastorius wears fur leg warmers inspired by this well-known pro wrestler, Bruiser Brody. Interesting. Bruiser Brody. I did not know that. So that's where they took... Is that where they took the inspiration for Mastorius? Was from the wrestler Bruiser Brody? Mastorius wears the costume of the ancient Roman gladiators who he believes may have originated his modern wrestling style. He wears a leather protector covering much of his upper body and skirt-like shorts. Zanjeev's home stage reinforces these character differences. Zanjeev fights in the Soviet industrial factory. Note the familiar hammer and sickle on the floor. The confined workers cheer him on. Mastorius's home stage is outdoors, in front of the historic fountain of Torrevi in Italy. The fountain features a large statue in the traditional Roman style. In that case, I 100% agree with Data East right here. Data, you know, Zangief, Russia, factory, wrestles bears. Mastorius is from Italy, Roman, Roman wrestling in front. I 100% agree with what that representative said about Data East. There's no way, no friggin' way that Zangief was copied by Data East for this character. Impossible. This seventh and last character comparison segment reveals Capcom's allegation that Data East's character Fei Ling is similar to Capcom's character Chun Li. Other than being Chinese women, the characters are not similar. This is Chun Li as she appears in the Street Fighter II strategy guide. And this is the bitmap image of Chun Li in her ready stance. Chun Li wears a blue China dress, revealing her legs up to her waist calf-high white boots, and spiked wristbands. She ties her hair up with an elaborate ribbon with two prominent poofs, one at each side of her head. These are pencil sketches of Fighter's history character, Fei Ling. Let's look at these artworks, shall we? So Chun Li, right here, all in her glory. No cleavage, no friggin' low-cut bra, no DEI, all that crap. This is what Chun Li is supposed to look like, people. Just a friggin' martial artist ready to friggin' kick her behind. Look at her friggin' spiky wrist. That's friggin' really dangerous. That's Chun Li. How does Fei Ling work? How does Fei Ling look in Fighter's History? She looks like that. I can see why they tried to, Capcom tried to do this, where there's similarities. Because the outfit I can see kind of, you got the little friggin' shoulder here. It kind of looks like Chun Li's, the way she's going here. You got the little skirt thing going on here, kind of, but not really. The, def the default color of Chun-Li is blue and yellow, while the default color of Failing is the dark green and the dark red and whatever. So, and then you got the little sandals, boots here, and you got big boots here, right? Set, small little loafers compared to big boots. You got the spiky wristbands that Chun-Li has. She doesn't. She has leather protective bands. So it's kind of different in that sense. Fei Ling is a top actress in Kyogeki, a traveling Chinese opera. Her opera costume has protective armor from her shoulder to her breast. The rest of the opera costume covers her legs to below the knee. Fei Ling wears brown kung fu shoes and wears her hair in a long ponytail tied in two places. Fei Ling's costume was inspired by this photograph of an authentic Chinese opera costume. This is the bitmap image of Fei Ling in her ready stance. Fei Ling is an expert in Toroken or praying mantis ken. It involves stances and fighting movements very different from those of other Chinese fighters, such as Chun Li in Street Fighter. Interesting. II. Okay, so that's another big difference. She's in pray mantis stance with her fighting stance. Chun Li just does kung fu. So that is a big difference right there as well. Yeah, she's got the little puffy hair going on here, but she's got the nice little long ponytail going on here. Fei Lin's home stage in China depicts other members of her theatrical company and is accompanied by music in the style of Chinese opera. Chen Li's home stage, which depicts a busy marketplace, is quite different. Fei Lin is a serious strong woman fighter who commands respect. Chun Li, on the other hand, grins and giggles, portraying a stereotype of a young girl who need not be taken seriously. Yeah. 
This concludes the character comparisons in the two games. Part two of this video will compare the characters' special fighting moves that Capcom asserts were copied by Data East. And that's the end of that video. So I have a feeling, I have a very big feeling that when it comes to character moves, there's going to be way more similarities there because there are. From what I've seen in this video, I can see similarities already. But in terms of visual comparisons, Data East covered themselves. They, let's go over it again. You got Guile looking like this. And Capcom saying Matlock is a copy. Not even close. Not even close. You got Sagat looking like this Muay Thai character, but you got Samchai, also a Muay Thai character, looking like this. They're different. Even the skin tone is different. You got Ryu, traditional Shotokan karate, looking like this. And then you got Misugushi, who has the illegal karate version where you do headbutts and throat slams and whatever. They kind of... Out of all the characters, this one kind of looks the most similar in my opinion. You got Vega looking like this, way too buff for what he should be. But then you got Jean Pierre from France as a friggin' gymnast, so it's way different there. Ken in his red karate gi, Shotokan karate, compared to friggin' uh, Ray, who doesn't look not even close to him. You got Zangief, or as she said, Zangief as a Russian wrestler, but then he got Masturius as a Roman wrestler, and he's got completely different outfit and completely different look, inspired by Bruiser Brody. And then you have lastly Chun-Li, who's into martial uh, Kung Fu martial arts, uh, compared to Fei Ling, who's Prey Mantis style. So that, I love doing videos like this. Thank you, Restart Fanzine, for uploading this video. I hope you upload too, so I can start doing a reaction to that as well.